2015 was a really big year for open education in Poland. After five years of waiting, we now have the Open Textbooks platform, which is a huge set of digital resources and a big policy success. Well, the, the most recent thing that we have done in Australia is um, all the departments of education have uh, now licensed their websites under Creative Commons by attribution license, which is fantastic. And now we're developing uh, strategies so they start licensing teaching and learning resources, publications under CC BY. Well, in my view, the biggest challenge for the open educational movement is really lack of awareness. Um, open education resources is still a fairly new concept. It was um, defined in 2002. In many countries, it requires years of awareness raising before you can move on to community building and actual advocacy work. We have developed and amendments to the copyright law, which will say um, that every educational uh, uh, resources publicly funded should be published under uh, open licenses. And this is very new and uh, very mind-changing uh, uh, amendments into legislation. Open educational resources, open education and knowledge to me are just uh, Di three different dimensions of the same thing. If you don't have open access, if you don't have open uh, education, then knowledge at some point in time is going to go uh, into a hidden mode. And uh, that's one reason why, as I said, barriers must be brought down at all levels, certainly at economic level. And I believe without open education, open knowledge is never going to be a possibility. What we've done is we've provided all of our school employees with permission to openly license their resources. We've also provided them with information about what open education is and what open education and open licensing is so that they can take advantage of the huge benefits of engaging with, making use of and creating and sharing their own open educational resources. Uh, many member states have already started thinking about open education at a more national level, coming up with proposals for national policies, and this is really important. We notice that every time there is a national policy regarding open education or open educational resources, there is a huge increase in use uh, in the availability of resources, in getting more people involved with the whole thematic, let's say, with the whole discourse. For example, our project School with Class 2.0, which uh, made not only teachers and school headmasters, but also the pupils realize that there is a difference between the C in the circle and two Cs, and that it's important what kind of music they add to the film that they are making, that it's important under what li license the photo of the patron of their school is uh, published on the school website. We were trying to understand uh, in Europe what were the uh, possibilities of teachers uh, creating, uh, building upon works of others or using works that were protected by copyright in their own educational resources? Because that's one of the questions that, uh, that comes uh, very often. Teachers don't only, when they are creating an open educational resource, they sometimes feel the need of uh, citing, quoting, uh, using. Well, in Norway now, we have 20% of the funding that goes into uh, learning material for upper secondary schools goes to OER. So it goes to a portal called the Norwegian Digital Learning Arena, so, which is now the largest supplier of learning material in Norway for upper, upper secondary school. 